Hi there. In this video, I want to discuss Vermeer's painting, View of Delft. And this is his second landscape. The, the other landscape is the little street. And then this one is the view of Delft. And it is a, I, I think it's a beautiful painting. I think it's striking in how he, how Vermeer chose to use light and shade in this painting and created visual depth. One thing that um, I want to talk about before I start like zooming in on details is that this painting is rather large. It's 38 inches by 45 and a half inches wide. And um, it has, you know, scaled wise, it's, it's, you know, the, everything is small, but if you think about the whole painting, it's, it is, you know, it's a, it's a large size painting for Vermeer. Um, this is the city of Delft and the waterway that connects Delft with, um, neighboring cities. And there's so much to be said about it, but let's, let's look at this. So we have a dark cloud and that is casting a shadow on the foreground of the town and the waterway. And then we see in the background that this is the new church tower and here, and then like over here, you know, beyond the gate and the, the city wall, a um, the town is lit brightly. So there's that sense of beautiful visual depth. And also what is nice too, is that it creates a, um, it it creates a sense of spacing back where the foreground, like in a way that's kind of our middle ground, I guess, is been flattened because there is no hard light and shade, but instead it becomes like another layer screen that then we can like go further in. Um, and let's zoom in. Be like, okay, so. Let's just look at this. Look how beautiful the, the he he dealt he treated the the church tower, and then even the the roof line that is in light, and then in the foreground or the more foreground of the city before you get to the water, you've got the the slate tiled roof is being dealt with, and then the stone and brick walls and the texture of the you, you know you have swaths of solid paint and then you've got his beautiful um diffused and um softer daubs of paint that adds texture and pattern that helps us identify well what you know is it brick is it rough stone like look at here this is that looks like like rough stone, so to speak, but then like he changes and it's all under, it's like you've got a, an ochre base that then has like reddish and grayish tones. And then we have like some earth red here that is added to, it's just very, very interesting in how, and like, let's look here. He, this is one of his, the, you know, we saw in the little street how he will like lay paint down, scumble over it or with a glaze actually lay, in, lay another layer down. And then with, you know, another more levels daub down more. And so Vermeer used a technique a lot called opaque glazes. And what opaque glazes are, are, um, all glazing in oil painting is essentially your paint pigment mixed with a medium, be it linseed oil or oleo gel or whatever type of medium you want to choose. And oftentimes, um, a lot of artists will use transparent pigments. Those are, are the very, very finely ground pigments. And they will, um, and then they will add more medium or linseed oil to 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 thin down the ratio of pigment to to oil to the the fat like your oil like in an oil paint is your fastener to that helps adhere the pigment to your painting surface and 
Vermeer used a lot of <clears throat> what are called opaque glazes, where you make you mix a glaze with opaque pigments. It goes down looking very opaque, and it still has some levels of opacity in it. But as that painting cures and ages, the 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 it gets a little bit more clarified, and so that the the, the those thicker, more granular, opaque pigments, um, like kind of like shimmer on the surface of your paint surface and they create um like a, a veil like a, a transparent uh, a transparent but not always transparent it depends on the ratio of pigment to and he would mix he would use like transparent glazes and then he would use opaque glazes in combination and he would even alter the type of medium he would use he would use like some medium that would flow out and spread and then he would lay another like daub of glaze in that flowing wet and wet glaze, you know, like layers jumbled of, of glazes and layers of paint. And he would use one that like a, a, a glazing medium that is is more prone to keeping its brushstroke and its shape that it won't slide. So then you'll have you have these wonderful combinations of. Of. Of spreading out glaze with more thicker glazes and like for example here is a perfect example you've got the dark under layer of paint and then you've got this middle gray there and then on inside of that he's put in paint daubs like that there and and the texture is just is you know and the building up of the different qualities and the qualities of the actual medium that's holding the paint, the different qualities of opaque pigments versus transparent pigments, all of those layers come together to create what makes a Vermeer painting so freaking amazing. And then not on top of that, you know, his attention to detail, he, he totally did not lose his sense of detail. Um, and then it's like, so for example, this is a silhouette of a, of a person Probably when it went down, it was a lot more opaque. But again, as paintings age, they will go down. And then like, um, look at that boat. Let's look at, and I want to show you, I'm, we're going to scan, but I want to show you this boat over here. I zoomed in before. And you see, do you see the different qualities? Let's see if I, if I zoom in, can if we can see it a little bit more. Do you see how... We've got, it looks like one layer, at least one layer. And like, you can see that's the layer too. And then he's gone back in and created like additional layers. And then this one looks like it might even have two layers just because it looks like it's built up so much more than what's going on over here. And, you know, you can see the build up here and there. and. And then like even the buildup of, so this was laid on top of this painted area and it has, it has become more translucent as time has passed. But let's look at this wall. This is, I find this so fascinating. So he, he laid down washes of color. And it, not just like one layer, it's like not one color. It's like he laid down, a layer, but then he changed it and there's another and it's adjusted and it's adjusted. But then he goes back and lays in more and more additional layers on top of that. And they and they vary in their transparency. They vary in their like the pig the type of pigments that are being used. It's just an amazing painting. And then what I am um, and then we have this wonderful quaint foreground right here of two ladies and a group of people there waiting at that barge. And so one of the cool things is I do not know if that is a, a river taxi, it might be, um, but in Holland, in this era, they had these river taxis that were, um, that would go along the canals and they were on a strict time clock, something that a like a British um, traveler had in his travel log talked about how 
in Holland or in the Netherlands, how very amazing it was the structure and organization of these river taxis that like if if the taxi says it was leaving at 9 15 you better believe that that boat was heading out of town at 9 15 in the morning and so uh, what's wonderful about this painting too is that we are seeing also an aspect of the economic of the economics and social organization of of the netherlands as well in fact in a william Kloss talk on that I um, listened to, watched. He talks about these boats here. These are for the, the herring fishing trade. And because we this was an era that was going, there was like a little mini ice age or like an ice snap. All the herrings had come down from being up near Denmark and the, the Scandinavian in like the North Sea and had the their, the fish had come further south to to the Netherlands, and so there became a very lucrative trade in the Netherlands for herring during this era as well. It's a beautiful painting. His his use of ultramarine blue in the sky is just luscious. The way he did his clouds, everything about this painting is amazing. And so, yeah. So thank you so much, and I will. I will be with you with the next painting soon.